Hello everybody and welcome back. We're looking at question two now on our 2016 Euclid. We started it in the last video with question number one and now we're up to question number two. There are two light bulbs and then one written portion here. So A part, uh, what are all values of n for which n over 9 is equal to 25 over n? All right, simple fraction equation, so uh, n over 9, 25 over n. I'm just going to cross multiply, multiply both sides by n, and we'll get n squared. Multiply both sides by 9, we'll get 9 times 25. So you could uh, write it out as 225 if you want to. Or you could keep it as 9 times 25. Remember, the 9 is 3 squared, 25 is 5 squared. Either way, we can see that this is 15 squared. Now you might say, oh, okay, well then obviously n is 15. And you would be right, but there are other values. Remember that when we square root, you might get uh, something like n is, uh, you want to do plus or minus the square root of 225. And so this is going to be plus or minus 15. Because there's no part in the question where they say that n has to be positive. So minus 15 will work just as well as 15 and we want to get both values so we'll say 15 or minus 15. all right there we go okay uh b part what are all values of x for which x minus 3 times x minus 6 or x minus 2 is equal to 6. okay we've got a quadratic here uh, what i think i'm going to do is set up the equation expand it out and then move the 6 over to the left hand side so I can get a zero and I can either use the quadratic formula or factor or something uh, to get myself an answer. So we'll get x squared minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equal to 6. The 6s are actually going to cancel out. We'll get x squared minus 5x is equal to 0. We can factor that or if you need to use the quadratic formula, that's fine as well. But we can factor, take out factor x, x times x minus 5 is 0. And so x is either 0 or 5. Remember, if you have a product of two things being equal to 0, one of those two things, or possibly both, are equal to 0. So either x is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. Okay. If you want to, of course, you can double check. Plug the 0 back in here. Minus 3 times minus 2 is 6. Or 5 minus 3, 2 times 3 is also equal to 6. Okay. Well, there we go. So... Uh, 0 or 5. Let's get a fresh sheet of paper again. And now we've got uh, C part here. At Willard's Grocery Store, the cost of two apples is the same as the cost of three bananas. Ross buys six apples and uh, 12 bananas for a total cost of 630. Determine the cost of one apple. Okay. So we could say something like, uh, and it's a written question, so we probably do want to say, you know, let A be cost of apples, B be the cost of bananas, because we have to explain our answer. And if you, you know, you're going to explain something, it's nice to explain to someone what terminology you're about to use. So it's a uh, cost of two apples equals the cost of three bananas. So we're told two times A, so two apples, three bananas. And then we're also told that $6.30, $6.30, is six apples plus 12 bananas, right? All we care about is the cost of one apple. So if we turn everything into apples, all these 12 bananas turn them into apples, we should be able to get just a single equation involving A. So 12 bananas, I'm going to write that in terms of three bananas a piece. So that's four times three bananas. And then I know, oh, I can change three bananas into two apples. So we get 6a plus 8a, 14a. Okay, so uh, what can we do? Well, we could divide by uh, 14 on both sides. Okay, so I'll grab my calculator. Uh, I could say, well, it's gonna be 45 cents. Uh, you can see that if you want to in your head, but there's no shame in, in using a calculator. So 630 divided by 14. We get zero four five dollars or forty five cents. Okay, so you would probably say one apple costs 
dollar forty or no I was about to say a dollar forty five. No, it's zero dollars forty five cents or zero point four five dollars. Okay? So we have a nice little answer. Probably put a box around it so it's very easy for whoever's marking to mark it. And there we go. So that's question number two. Up next we're gonna take a look at question three as we continue our look at our Euclid paper.